listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. Challenge to change, where transformation begins with you. Change appears to be one of the biggest hindrances to growth from relationships that I have encountered while in ministry. Our focus is usually on someone else and what they have done or are doing to us, instead of us being accountable to God and making sure we're not a stumbling block to ourselves or others. Challenge to Change is about us taking personal responsibility for our Christian walk as we face challenges and issues and how to overcome them through biblical tools and techniques that we will discuss on this show. Everything about this show is encompassed in us depending on the Holy Spirit to edify, enrich, and transform lives by introducing individuals to a personal encounter with God's unconditional love. That is where real transformation begins and ends. We run to you before we run to our spouse. We run to you before we run to our mother, our father, our sister, our brother our aunt and uncle, we run to you because you are the only one that has the answers, that has the ability to deliver us in that time of need, that moment. And sometimes we run to you just to say thank you because if we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't thank you enough. So Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to, to just come forth and just have your word taught to us. I thank you in advance for the anointing that you placed on me that I have eyes to see, ears to hear, and spiritual insight to deliver your message. I thank you that any moment in time that you shifted and want to do something different, I'm your man. And I thank you in advance that I just come against distractions. I come against things that will try to come up and stop us from receiving your word and having freedom manifested in one moment of time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Glory, glory, glory. So I'm doing the teaching, continue doing the teaching on six steps to renewing our mind. How many of y'all need your mind renewed? Everybody in here ought to raise their hand. Because <laughs> as long as we think the same way, we're going to get the same results. And, and, and I have some good news for you. Is we can change at any time just by changing the way we think. We have thought a certain way for so long that we just think it's the right way. But, but let's take a look at it. Let's just take a look at it. All right, then Romans chapter 12, verse 2. It says in the New Living Translation, it says, don't copy. I'm going to read the whole thing. I'm learning how to read the whole thing because there's so much stuff in there. It says, don't copy the behavior of, and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. So this is Revelation. Now, we, we could have been born again, spirit-filled, I think it's MP3 listening. It used to be CDs, but MP3 listening, speaking in tongues, and we can still be the same exact person. The only difference is we're born again. If we were to die, we would go to heaven. But the thing of it is, is we can be into the Lord for 60 years and still think the same way. He tells us right here, let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. So he's saying that all we have to do is get to know him, spend time with him. How, how, how can we get to know him? By prayer, his word, listening to him. But if we don't change the way we think, we're going to be a born-again Christian, going to heaven, but thinking the same way. How many of us still let people bother us because they don't speak to us in the morning? Because I know, you know, we're funny about that. You say good morning to somebody and they don't say good morning back. Am I talking to myself? I mean, so when you got born again... 30 years ago, that used to bother you. It shouldn't bother you now. Just change the way you think. I got a pattern. Speaks my own well feet. So by the time you, you decide what you're going to say back, I'm already gone. <laughs> because if I stop speaking to you, then I'm codependent because you determine whether I spoke or not. And I choose to be free. You choose to be free? All you got to do is change what you think. If you're in poverty, the reason you're in poverty... It's because you think poverty thoughts. Now, I don't mean any harm. Not everybody had the benefits that we had. Maybe you were born into a rich family. 
But if you were born into a poor family, I mean, how poor can you be if you were born in, 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 in a barn? And then Jesus, before he left, he had bookkeepers. You, you understand what I'm saying? You can have a jacked up family. Mom and dad wasn't doing what they were supposed to do. They didn't raise you the way they were supposed to raise you. But he said right there, he said, let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. It's called forgiving them. Now, how do we think after we forgive? We don't revisit that thing. Now, now okay, y'all going to call me a secular pastor, call it. Uh, they, they had this HBO special on Tina Turner. Y'all know who Tina Turner is. Can I talk about somebody else? Okay? And, and so Tina got beat up. Y'all know a story. Husband abused her and everything. This lady rebirthed, came out, and hit, hit records, and... Her dream was, I want to be the first black rock and roll star. So when they interviewed Tina, all they kept bringing up was her past. And she said, now this Tina. She said, I don't want to talk about that. That's my past. How come y'all keep asking me about what I'm not in? Uh Uh-oh. So when somebody tried to bring up your past, Nicole, what are you supposed to tell them? Who, Who are you talking about? That'll freak them out. Next time somebody try to bring up your past core, you say, who are you talking about? I don't know that guy. I don't know that woman. Because, see, as long as they can bring up my past, Jerome, that they can keep me where I used to be. But when they bring up my past and I put in my future, they can't hang with me no more because they don't know who I am. See, they looking for the old so they can feel comfortable reminding me who I used to be. But see, right there in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, let God transform you. And all he's saying is, it's in the way you think. I would be out of a job as a counselor if people change the way they think. Now, I ain't saying nothing. I ain't forecasting nothing. I ain't, 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 you know, I ain't forecasting nothing. But you got to ask yourself, guys, why am I in the same place that I've always been. I was like this before I was born again. Jesus said, I came that you may have life and have it in abundance. And all he's telling me, change the way you think. That, that was just my introduction. <laughs> now can I go on with the message? Ed, is I right? go on? <laughs> then Romans says, and then you will learn to know God's will for, your, for you. See, until my mind is renewed, I don't understand God's will. Because see, if my mind is not renewed, I got to try to figure it out, Core. I got to try to figure it out, Port. I got to figure out how I'm going to get it done. But if I'm in him and he's in me and he's the provider and he can only do good for me, then I'll have to figure it out because I will know his will. I'll have to try to figure out this renovation. I just know it's getting done. I just know that when I go to the mailbox, checks are in there. People had used the mailbox, maybe the the, the, the mailbox maybe once every three months. Now it's like every time I go to the mailbox, there's money in it for the renovation. Minding my own business, people walking up and just giving me money. I, I heard about your renovation. But see, when I'm in him and I, I have his thoughts, I don't have to try to figure out how it's going to get done. You get a trash dumpster delivered and the man don't want to charge you. You're getting floors done And the guy calls back and he says, do you mind if I lower the price? Now, what am I supposed to say to that? (laughs) What what am I supposed to say? But thank you, Jesus. But see, as long as I'm in his will, I have his promise. And if all he can do do for me is give me good, then that's what I'm expecting. And it goes on to say, if I know his will, which is good, pleasing and perfect. So see, each step is nothing but better. Until I get to the perfect. But see, I got to have my mind renewed because if my mind is not renewed, then this is what happened. God blessed me and I'm thinking something attached to it. Well, why would he do that for me? I sinned last night. He ain't looking at your sin. He looking at his promise. So when people try to bless you, unless you have your mind renewed, you think they up to something. Some of them are, but see, you would know that because your mind is renewed. See, we used to get food, but now we won't get food no more. Y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about? Anybody used to get food? 
I mean, fool every day. I mean, you know, every day it was, you know, and, and then people come and try to warn you. Hey, look, man, love you. I'm telling you this. You, are, you need to make this adjustment. Man, you just jealous. I'm jealous enough to tell you to watch out. But I'm just talking about how to have your mind renewed. Our lives are always moving towards our strongest belief. Somebody's belief now, this has nothing to do with coronavirus. Somebody's belief this morning was, I ain't coming to church. They was on their way, and all of a sudden they heard something over at the food place. You know what? I should, I could watch this tomorrow. What's your strongest belief? If you're wondering where you're moving, all you got to do is ask yourself. See, the Holy Spirit is a teacher. He's the guy. And, and, and you wonder why I'm so excited, because this is my specialty, talking about the mind, because I was jacked up. I, I had anger issues. Y- 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 can y'all believe the pastor had anger issues? I remember Curly and I was, was together, and I got mad about something, something. I, I, was mad. I don't even remember what it was. But, I, I, you know, my fist like this, and then I hit the ceiling. And Curly, in her wisdom, in her, her renewed mind, she said, honey, is your hand bleed? <laughs> Sharon, stop laughing. I see you laughing through your mat. Sharon, laughing through her mat. She said, honey, is your, 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 your hand bleed? Yes. Well, do you think the car got hurt? No. Do you think that solved the problem? No. Then she started talking. I didn't want to hear. Didn't even want to hear. I just <laughs> cut the music up. You know? Then it was another time. We, we, we getting our first leather sofa. Going into our apartment. You hear me, Cheryl? And, and, and you know, it's like it's hot. We don't have no air conditioning in this van. And, you know, we got to drive. We got to get it. And... You know, we get it to the house, and, and so the, the, the seat goes in good. The chair goes in really good, Shay. But then it come time for us to put the sofa My brother laughing at me. And then it come time to put the, the sofa in. And so I grabbed this uh, uh, mailman, you know, because I didn't want my wife to try to carry this thing. It's heavy. And uh, so I got this mailman, and he said, I'll help you. And I said, I'll give you $10. We sliding it through, though, with just this much left. And he tore my leather sofa. I got so mad, I swole up. I mean, I just, I dropped the sofa where it was, and I swole up. Y'all know what the hook looked like, right? Only thing that happened, I didn't turn green, but I swole up, man. And uh, the the male guy left. I mean, you know, he didn't get a $10 or nothing. I just swole. And my wife got in my face. She said, in the name of Jesus, I speak to that, that lying spirit that tells you that you operate in anger, and I command it to leave. And, and, and I'm still frozen, so, so I can't move, but I hear what she's saying. And then all of a sudden things start. That was the last day I got angry like that. Because I had to look at my thinking. Because that was twice that she had to come in and and let the air out. So I said, come on, man. Come on. See, I was gravitating towards my strongest belief. See, my belief was we should be able to get that sofa in there with no problem. Because I'm a Christian. But y'all do know that you go through trials, right? Situations will come up. Well, God must not be in it because I'm going through a trial. See, that's a lie right there. You have somebody else that's against you, the enemy. Some call him Satan. Some call him the devil. The enemy, and he uses people. Y'all know that, right? Okay, all right. (laughs) Get ready to say something. Go ahead and say it. The scripture says, not Paul, the scripture says that some of the enemies are going to come from your own household. Uh Uh-oh. Because, see, we was a family, and we act a certain way, and then you want to mess things up because you want to act different. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? I don't know what to do with you. You, hide, hide, you think you're high and mighty. Yes, I am. I'm in Jesus. And you can be too. All right, so anybody thinking towards their strongest belief? What, what's something you're going through? Put it in the chat section. You guys can raise your hand holler it out. You're going to move towards it. If you believe in abundance, you're going to move towards it. If you're not ready for abundance, when you get it, y- y'all saw on the uh, uh, the news they was interviewing different people who had got their their return. They uh, what, what's it? Stimulus. One, one family they went out and they had fourteen hundred times two, that's twenty eight, and they bought lotto tickets, and they end up with two hundred dollars for the twenty eight they spent. So did they move toward their strongest belief? Okay, now. 
All right, so quick review. See, see how it's still in there. All right, thoughts always come from both inside and outside. So you have thoughts that's already on the inside of you, and then you have thoughts of things that happen on the outside. You see somebody, somebody cut in front of you, stuff like that. Then we talked about we have total control over our thoughts. Who have control? I can't blame somebody else for why I hit the roof. Can't blame somebody else for why I swole up. But y'all write this, 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 the Holy Spirit gave me this thing. I'm minding my own business. And he said, I said, so Holy Spirit, what's the, the closest way to get to a stronghold? He said, a stronghold is the inability to process new information that would bring healing to an old problem. And he put an S on the problems. What did God try to do with Israel? He tried to take them out of bondage. And all they did was complain whenever something new came up. So he took them out of slavery and all they focused on was it was better then. So when a stronghold is operating in you, you can't hear, process new information. People will come to you and try to share new things if you just do this, if you just try this. So he took them from slavery to freedom, but all they focused on was what it was like when we were enslaved. See, sometimes we can't grow because we want to stay in the comfort zone. We want to stay in the comfort zone. Now, he designed so that their, their clothes would grow with them. As of today, they still haven't come up with a way to do that. Because he said the shoes never wore out, the clothes never wore out. So if you're this small and then you're this big, your clothes had to grow. But a stronghold is the inability to process new information that would bring healing to an old problem. So the question is, how long have we dealt with this problem? Because he said it's an old problem. Then all you have to do is receive new information for that old problem. So whatever you're dealing with right now, I'm bringing healing to you by bringing his word. That was the prayer that our prayer person prayed. I'm bringing healing to you right now, but you got to receive it. You got, okay, okay, I can take that. Okay, yeah, let me try that. Whereas some people are getting the revelation that I'm sharing, and they are refusing to put it together, refusing to act on it. But then on the other end, there are other people that say, that's exactly what I needed to hear. That revelation came to me. I can, you, you mean tell me? I can take this information and change the way I think, change the way I act, change the way I live, change who I date, change who I marry, change how I rest, change how I stand, change how I win. You mean tell me that all I have to do is receive that God wants me to think different, that I can change my life by the way I think? Have you ever noticed when, 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 when ladies go get their hair done, they walk different. They, they, they got a different strap with them. Remember I know ladies? So if you can get your hair cut and think different, what would we do if God's word got on the inside of us? And the same thing for men. That's how we get our hair done. That's how. <laughs> and, and we're different. You know, the first thing we do, the dude hand us the mirror, and he tried to pull it back, and we grab his hand. No, you showed me this side. I want to see what this side looks like. And we strut different. You put new clothes on. So if you can put new clothes on, won't you put a new spirit in? If clothes can change the way I think and the way I walk, then what if I allow his spirit to be on the inside of me? What if I allow his word that's alive to operate on the inside of me? What if? How would my life be different? You walk in the house, and, 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 and if you have some argumentative person living with you, you walk in the house, and God's renewed your spirit because you grabbed his word. Because you released the stronghold because you received the new information that would change and bring healing to an old problem. So on the way home, you decide to pray for that person instead of anticipate how they're going to be when you get in. Because remember, I say whatever you think about, you bring about. All right, so y'all got to understand what a stronghold does? Okay. We find what we're looking for. What you looking for? What you looking for? What you looking for today? You go into a restaurant and, 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 and you expect them to treat you different. That, you know, I'm going to get that jacked up waiter. You saw that waiter that, that was right there and then all of a sudden you end up with that. Your favorite one's not there. But what were you looking for when you came in? Were you looking for it to be a good experience? How many times we got to confront a situation and we done already played our how it's going to happen? 
They're not going to receive it. They're going to be jacked up. They're going to be mad. They're going to be angry with me. What, what, what else we say about that? They're not going to receive it. We won't be friends anymore. And it goes well. You know what happened? Be honest with you about something. The only reason people do behavior is because it works. If every time I talk to you, you cry so that I stop talking, then what? what? So I'm anticipating you crying, but I got tissues for you. <laughs> There's a bathroom right there. Just, just, just go ahead in there, get yourself together, wipe yourself up and stuff, and I, I'll be right here. Well, then that person learned, wait a minute, this is one person that's not going to let what used to work work. It's the real stuff, guys. Amen? So you find what you're looking for. Philippians, this is my favorite, one of my favorite scriptures. Philippians 4, verse 8 and 9. Yeah, I know you heard it before. You're going to hear it again. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are no noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good report, if there is any virtue, life, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. So you don't walk in church and say, man, the church used to be full. You walk into church and say, I thank God for the people that are here. I thank God for the people that are watching. I thank God that right now people all over the world are watching. I'm not just limited to Richmond. See how that works? Let me tell praise and worship people something. Y'all ready for this? Praise and worship people? Raise your hand. You praise and worship. Don't look at the people to worship. You standing up worship. It's not your job to make them worship. Because he worship is a personal thing. If you know him like the people who are singing know him, you would raise your hand. But see, don't, don't, don't even pay attention to them. You know you study. You know you're singing what God told you to sing. Look at the, look at the words. I don't look at no specific verse. I minister the word. It looks like, uh, yeah, Billy went to sleep. That's Billy's problem. <laughs> I'm getting... What I'm supposed to get by delivering what I'm supposed to deliver. See, focus on what you're getting out of it. And don't be concerned about whether other people are getting it. Because, see, you can be distracted by them when you're supposed to be into him. It's different, guys. It's, it's real. Because, see, the more I see the times approaching, the more I see it's time for urgency to be manifested in our own lives. Because, see, this is the thing. This is what God working on me. I can't talk about what he's working on you with. He's working on me about... Paul, the reason why you and your wife are blessed so you can bless other people. Y'all understand what I'm saying? But if you don't have enough to feed yourself, how are you going to feed somebody else? If you don't have enough to give for yourself, how are you going to give somebody else? But the thing ain't about you. It's about him. Change the way you think. You, you sitting there, you're adding it up, and it don't look like the numbers are match. You got to change the way you think. He promised you abundance. Now, what do I have to change in order to walk in that? And the reason why I'm talking about abundance is because I know a lot of people are dealing with lack in their life. But I'm telling you, what would it be like to be able to bless somebody and not be concerned about how your bill is going to get paid? Now, I ain't talking about Billy Bob and Sally Joe. I'm talking about people that you know. They didn't say nothing, but God showed you them, and you could walk up to them, and you ain't got to get spiritual on them. Y'all understand what I'm saying about spiritual? Well, God told me last night while I was sleeping, he showed me your face that you would have this red suit on and you would have on red shoes and your hair would be worn a certain way. And he told me to give you this two thousand dollars. You just walk up. I, I mean, you know, before Corona, walk up, hug somebody and shake the hand and you just leave it in the hand and you don't say nothing. You can see the mom struggling when she's in the grocery store and she's counting that money to see whether she got enough and you got more than enough. But I don't know her, so I shouldn't give her. Your mind needs to be renewed. Your reward don't come from them. It comes from him. I'm, I'm, just talk, I'm just talking about having your mind renewed. There's a whole lot of stuff we're missing because we're thinking the same. I'm going to say the word, stinking way. You stink so much people can smell you because you're thinking the same way. You tell me what, what, where your head is when you ask me a question. Uh-oh, uh-oh. A whole lot of people spend time trying not to lose instead of living their life to win. Y'all need to write it down. A whole lot of people spend a lot of time trying to make sure they don't lose instead of planning to win. 
Because if you're thinking about losing, what you do is you think, what kind of thoughts? Losing thoughts. I can't risk this, Candace. I can't do this. Because what happened if this happens? What happened if I lose this? Well, I, I, I can't do it. But if you're thinking about winning, you'll take risks. Not only will you take risks, but you will talk to God about the risks you're getting ready to take. He might tell you to adjust that, or he might tell you to accelerate it. I'm thinking about it. Okay, so, so let's uh, re- rework the church. But I'm thinking only one side. And then because I'm married to iron sharp and iron, everybody got to have an iron sharp and iron person. If it's not your spouse, you need to find somebody same sex. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Because otherwise you get into emotional adultery. Y'all know what emotional adultery is? That's when you're sharing with someone other than your spouse secrets that you should be sharing with your spouse. That's why I say same sex. So my iron is sharp and iron that God gave me. When she laughed about when my father said, Paul, you know you're supposed to be in ministry before he passed. He said, you know you're supposed to be in ministry. And Curly, she nudged me because we were sitting beside each other. She nudged me and she, she grinned at me. I, t- I told you, I told you. And my dad said, he said, I don't know what you're laughing about. You've been called in there with him. That's why I went away. <laughs> man, I went away. I'm telling you, you, you got to have somebody like that, guys. Y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about? If you got somebody to only tell you what you want to hear, uh-oh, your mind going to stay right there. Because they're going to be protected by that. It, it, we've been friends for 20 years, and I can't be honest with them. But who else? You know they're going downhill. All right? I'm, I'm going to keep on going. Okay? All right. <laughs> All right. Y'all write this down. The enemy target is our mind. His weapons are his lies. The enemy's target is our mind. So we don't have to know whether he's going after our bodies. He's going to go after our mind so that our mind can tell our body we're sick. He's going to go after our mind so our, our mind will tell that we're in lack. He's going to tell a lie about it. And then what, what are we going to do with the lie? We're going to tell somebody else. We're going to first believe it, and then we're going to tell other people about it. By the moment for two or three witnesses, every word will be established. Say, so, hey, did you know such and such? You know, he lost his job. So things are not going well for him. And then they're going to tell somebody else. Because some people are glad when they see you going down here. You got a question? Um, talking about uh, getting back to the um, uh, you do a behavior because it works. Uh-huh. So say if someone um, does a behavior and then you respond a certain way, don't do that, don't do that, whatever it is. Um, I guess in renewing your mind, would you just choose another approach? Like, I mean, would you not address it? Would you go in the other room? Would you ignore it? Um, that kind of thing. Okay. All right. So if, if someone's doing some behavior that is not, not right, just not right, then instead of telling them about what not to do, tell them what the choices are to do. Because there's something about the mind that when we hear don't, whatever said after that, it doesn't matter. Y- y'all understand what you're saying? What I'm saying? When somebody tell, okay, okay. When some- <laughs> God told Israel, God told Adam and Eve, let's start out with the first humans. He said, don't, you have all this that's available. Don't eat of this tree. What's the tree they want? Parents tell you, don't date this person. What, what you do? So you just act like it's cool. You know you're praying in the spirit for one. <laughs> so you tell the person, you know, if you decided to do it this way, you might get better results. Instead of don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, change it, replace the thought. Hey, look, this, this, if we tried it this way, it could work a lot quicker, a lot better. You could learn a lot faster because once you tell a child, some adults are children, what not to do, they would do it spitefully. Y'all know anybody like it? That's it. Let me just share this with you. So now this is what Curly do. Talking about my wife and, and, and our special treats that she made. So now, this is what she do. This is what she do to her. She say, honey, uh, these are nice hot cookies. You can have this one. <laughs> Lord, Lord, Lord she, she, I know what she's doing. Because she know at night I'm going to sneak down and I'm going to get two cookies. So now she introduced the food to me by telling me what's available. 
She did sweet potato pie yesterday. She said, honey, you, you want to get a piece of sweet potato pie? Because she know at night what I'm going to do. I'm going to sneak down. I'm going to get it. That big piece going to be missing. So you tell people what's available instead of telling them what they can't have. So basically, um, like in this, in this thing, when you, say, when you say the word don't, obviously, and I've done this too, mm -hmm. if somebody says don't do something, you're like, well, wait a minute, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it because I know I can do it. There you go. Mm -hmm. And so when you say don't, um, I guess the person might just tune out the rest of whatever you're saying. Yes, that's exactly right. Mm -hmm. the, the, think about it. There are people sitting here in church, and the majority of men, that the wife stopped asking them to come to church. They just got up and went to church. You see what I'm saying? So when you ask people to do stuff over and over, see, I, I do three times. Three times my boundary. I'm only going to ask you three times. That's it. After that, it's on you. Because, see, if you got a good life, you're just trying to share your good life. But do not do you watch who you share it with? Because, see, sometimes pain is the only teacher that people choose to receive. See, I live my life like this. I, I see. I live my life like this. If I see you get hurt by it, then I'm looking at the things, I'm processing the information, then I'm not going to go that way. But maybe all I have to make adjustments is three feet, three inches, and go a different way. I'm not going to try to prove to you, because, see, you can always move the gauge. I need to prove to myself. I hear the hand. Yeah, I was just um, piggyback on what you said as far as pain. Uh huh. That's like when you tell a child not to put a fork into an extra outlet. Okay, all right. There's pain coming along with that once they do it. Then once they feel that pain, I'm not doing that anymore. There it is. Yeah, yeah. consequences. Yeah, you didn't have to say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I, I got about four, four minutes. Okay, all right, so. Number four of the way to remove, renew your mind is replace negative thoughts with positive. You've heard that so many times, and people still don't do it. So what I did, I add, added two words to it out loud. Replace negative thoughts with positive out loud. So I can be standing up here talking to you, and I can be replacing a thought out loud without you even knowing that I'm doing it. It's because the, the mind has to stop. When I say something out loud, the mind has to stop to hear what the mouth has to say. So I tell people in advance, if they're coming to me for counseling, I tell them in advance, you don't overcome a thought with a thought. You overcome a thought with a word. You have to interrupt the thought by saying something. The mind will automatically stop to hear what the mouth, your mouth has to say. So, for example, I'm looking at negative lies. So negative thoughts are basically lies. So let's look at your worth. Let's say your worth says I'm worthless. So as long as you think that thought, what other thoughts going to come with it? If I think I'm worthless, what other thoughts are going to come with it? Nobody loves me. I can't do it. Go ahead. I'm listening. I'm all alone. I'm a, I added all to it. Nobody loves me. I'm a loser. I'm not good enough. I never, right. I never get it right. But boom, I'm going to replace that thought. In uh, Psalms chapter one, uh, 139, 14, it says in the Amplified, I will give thanks and praise to you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your words, and my soul knows it very well. Now, let me break that down to you. Now, this is God talking. I will give thanks and praise to you. This is God's word going in. And, and David dealt with this. He, he was writing this. I will give praise to you for I am fearfully. It, that meant that when God made us, he made sure everything was in its proper place. So when you get an operation to change your nose, God gave you that nose. He made sure that I have eyebrows like this and your eyebrows are different. He placed my eyes exactly where he wanted them to be. 
fearfully means that he took time to make sure every adjustment was just right for me. The same way he did for you. So he does not, uh, what do you call it, assembly line, us. The more expensive a car is, what, what, what they do to it? Customize it. I ordered a bike in December of 26, but they customized my bike. Now, I, I can't walk in the store and get this bike. So they tell me, okay, your bike should be ready by June 14th. So they fearfully put that thing together, made sure it was my height, my size, my pedal, my, my handlebars, my, 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 my. That's why you're different than everybody else. And we, what we believe the lie is we try to make ourselves like others are. So, see, we done went over to the lie side when he's saying, I made you exactly like that. If your hairline is like that, guess what? He, he, he adjusted it. He said, okay, all right, let me look at this. Let me look, let, let, let me look at this. Let me adjust it. Because he looked better with hairline right here instead of one like that. <laughs> Some of y'all ain't satisfied with your hairline. So I, I'm, I'm going to look here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we got arguments going on in the congregation about the hairline. Jerome, you hear what I'm saying? Okay. Some of us got nice hair, and some of our hair's a little different. But he knew how you were going to take care of hair. I mean, fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderfully made. So there's wonders in you that you haven't discovered. Remember when you came here, I said, there's five talents on the inside of you that you're not even aware of. Because he wouldn't just make us have one talent. Uh-oh, uh-oh. But then it goes on to say, wonderful are your works. So y'all check this out. I'm minding my own business. He, he say, wonderful are your works. So every time you look in the mirror, you should be at wonder at who you're looking at. Instead of, I need to change this. I don't like this. I don't like how my teeth look. I don't like how my hair look. I need to do this. What about my ears curling out? <laughs> he said, wonderful are your works. And my soul knows it very well. Do you know how anointed you are? Do you know how special you are? Even if he makes twins, the twins might look the same on the outside, but they're different on the inside. What happens if one renews his mind before the other one does? But every time you look at yourself, you try it tonight. Instead of taking off your clothes to go to bed, as you're taking off your clothes, look at the wonder how your feet move, how your legs move, how your fingers move, how you can still see. Instead of talking about, I need to just this. I need to lose this. I'm, I'm just talking. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for today's service. <laughs> I thank you that I spoke to the people you told me to speak to. And the one who chose to listen and have their mind renewed, those are the ones that are grabbing this thing. They're walking in it. They're thinking different. And the change has already started to take place. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I just thank you in advance for those who want to know you. Having your mind renewed is just one process of getting to know you, getting to know you and operate in a different way. So let's just go back. Just take me back on the fly. So if you're out there and you want to know how you can spend eternity with God, how your life can be changed forever, not just today, but forever. And forever, I mean eternity. So repeat after me, Father, in the name of Jesus. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. Your word says in Acts 2.21, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jesus, I call on your name now. Come into my heart. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Therefore, according to your word, I am now saved in Jesus' name. This concludes today's message on Challenge to Change, where real transformation begins with you, with Pastor Paul Morgan. If you are ever in the Richmond, Virginia area, join Pastor Paul for Sunday service at 10 a.m. at Chosen Generation Ministries. The website is www.chosenrva.com or call at 866-333-9505.